What's up guys? We are back with another Dragon Ball Z SH Figure Arts review, jumping back to the Namek Saga and a recent P-Bandai release here in the States that has already been out for a little while. Plenty of folks already have this guy, but he just came out here in the States. So we're taking a look at Zarbon. Now, I've not gotten to reviewing every... Uh, you know, Namek Saga thing. I didn't review Dodoria, for instance, the most recent uh, figure that kind of goes with him, but I have to review Zarbon. I've really been looking forward to this one. When it comes to a, I don't know, a Namek Saga character that isn't super, super important, I always really enjoyed this guy just because he was so ridiculous. And then, of course, he transforms into a very weird second form. We, of course, have his first form on deck today. Now, he still comes in the standard Dragon Ball figure art style packaging. So you've got the figure there in the window with the little cutout for the product shot there on the front. You've got product shots on the spine. And then in typical Tamashi fashion, you have got product shots showcasing some of the stuff Zarbon comes with along with uh, how well he can move. So let's do it. Let's pull him out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, everyone's favorite pretty boy, the latest entry in Namek Saga, Frieza Force characters, Zarbon. I have really been looking forward to this guy. You know, we've got Dodoria, so it makes perfect sense that we would also get him because they definitely play off of each other and kind of act as a team. So let's see what this guy can do, see how he moves around. He is, he's very normal in many ways for a figure arts, but he's also very different too. He has one very specific thing that I honestly don't know exists in the line if, if you know i could just be misremembering but he's got a point of articulation that is very specific and is not let's say we'll just say not standard uh for this line so we've got a head that is kind of locked down uh, he can't really look up all that well because of his hair so it hits the back of his neck pretty bad if you cast him off to the side a bit he can look up but straight up he's very difficult down is down so very good there We've got tilt side to side. You've got your rotation. We've got articulated hair. It's a ball peg, so it just has, you know, up and down. It's got shimmy uh, based on how you orient that ball. The shoulder pads will hinge up. Arms go out all the way up. They do rotate all the way around, and we do have a butterfly joint. And it's a super crazy butterfly joint. I mean, it comes all the way out. It does really jack around with the shoulder pads, though, when you fully extend it. And the arm will go all the way around, but of course you've got to watch your pads. It's a, it's a full ball peg in there, so it does have a little bit of drop-down capability also. It's, it's minor, but, but it's there. We've got bicep swivel. We've got double-jointed elbows that go about that far. You've got hinges and rotation at the wrist. It's a it's a ball hinge, of course, so typical stuff there. For the torso, he can go backwards slightly. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. Forwards, though, really, really well. You've got some tilt. It's also a rotation point, and you have a full-on waist twist, like a full waist twist. There's nothing getting in the way here. That's That's relatively uncommon on its own to be able to go all the way around. We do have a cape here, and it's similar to, say, you know, the Great Saiyan Man, Majin Buu, stuff like that, uh, Piccolo. So it's got a peg that goes into the back, and it hinges. It works pretty well. It's sturdy. I don't really feel like it's going anywhere, unless you're, like, mashing it or anything. You know, it might pop out. But it does feel sturdy when it's in. It doesn't have any real, like, rotation, though. So it is very semi-static, I guess is the best way to say it, because it can't move, but it only goes out. It doesn't go to the side or anything like that. You you would need a longer peg to make it be able to pop out, and it doesn't really just doesn't really do that, which is kind of annoying, because uh, I'd love to be able to give him a little bit more flair when he's, you know, posing. We've got legs that go out only about this far, surprisingly. That's kind of limiting. They kick forward all the way. They kick backwards all the way as well. And here's where things get pretty crazy because, I mean, this is a normal thing to see in many lines, but it's not common to see in this line. Full on thigh cut. And it's only because he has the incredible fashion sense to, to wear, you know, these, these thigh highs. So he has a full on thigh cut since it's a double situation here with pieces of plastic. So the leg is separate from, well, the upper thigh is separate from the rest of the leg. So it's just more of a coincidence that it's here. It's not like it's gonna happen across the line. But I'm still surprised to see it, whether it makes perfect sense or not. Uh, we've got double-jointed knees. 
and then down at the ankles you do have rotation he's got really fat ankles because he got really he's got really you know stocky legs so his ankles are still really thick so his uh, rock, rocker and hinge is not all that great like hinge is pretty good rocker kind of loses a little bit but it's still not too bad and then you of course got your toe articulation so he's he's pretty normal but he's also not normal if that makes sense you know he's got the cape which of course is different on its own uh, he's got a full-on waist twist which while not the craziest thing in the world isn't exactly common either and then of course he has you know a full-on thigh twist now aesthetically i'm really happy with zarbon like there's honestly not a whole lot i truly have a problem with here if anything i think he was translated from screen to figure pretty well from the saiyan armor to whatever you want to call the things on his arms to the weird thigh high situation the dude has an odd fashion sense but it definitely works to make him a different kind of figure it's obviously affected his construction you know because he's got the thigh high thing he's got a cape he's a very non-standard figure arts in that regard compared to a lot of other figures but he also is just going to look different so you've got things like his incredibly subdued color scheme because he's not bright and vibrant. A lot of his colors are rather muted from even the skin tone of that sort of bluey green color to just your flat navy for your trunks and your thigh high things and then just the muted purple for the you know whatever, whatever these are going to be called on his arms. I don't know what they're what they're called you know bicep highs. I don't know I'm not sure what you want to call them uh, but I do think he looks really good and, and again they did a nice job of translating him from screen to figure. He's also not in a normal sizing realm, I suppose, too. He's not as big as some of the bigger bads from this arc, you know, Birder or Captain Ginyu or Raccoon, but he's also bigger than our Z fighters. So he, he exists sort of in a happy, happy medium where he's not as big as the big bads, but he's bigger than our heroes, too. So he's going he's gonna to scale nicely with some of the other figures, and we'll, of course, do size comparisons. Uh, but I think overall they did a nice job, especially for a figure that doesn't have a lot of paint on him either. You know, you've got a little bit on the hands, and down on the feet area, you've got a little bit on the bicep because of that division with the, uh, again, whatever this thing is called, and his skin showing through. And then, of course, some on the Saiyan armor. And it's all really clean and crisp. Looks really nice. You've got your cape back here, which, while I wish it was a little bit more functional, does look pretty good. The, the sculpted on wrinkles are, are pretty nice. I've, I've always been okay with figure arts capes. Like, they're not perfect, but they're certainly not the worst thing ever because they do afford some mobility. I just wish it had a little bit more. I wish it could do a little bit more uh, otherwise. You know, it's, it's one of those instances where I might consider trying to get a soft goods cape, but I've also never gone down that road for, for this line either. So I'm not really sure if I would do that or not. I don't want to... It would feel like that would almost break up the aesthetic too much for me. And then, of course, you have your head sculpt up here, which among the head sculpts, I mean, they all pretty much denote a very specific emotion from Zarbon because the dude ranges from, uh, from very calm and cool and collected to absolutely insane at certain points. And this one, I think, very much uh, kind of showcases his very confident demeanor because this this is how he looks you know for a while in the show when he's you know first starting to show off and, and i think he looks pretty solid he's got the earrings he got the headdress and the very massive you know five head kind of situation but a lot of this gets drawn in because he has these striking greens up there the hair and then of course the eyebrows and his his lips as well they make him kind of stand out because they're they're the one aspect of the figure that is vibrant and is really bright and i think the hair looks good sculpted nicely and the braid on the back with the little band it does look nice as well and it's sculpted in such a way uh, that it will flow over his back so it's not like jutting out or kind of you know getting in the way you can sort of move it around and it does fit correctly over top of his shoulders uh, and his and his Saiyan armor. So I'm really happy with the, with the head sculpt and the faces in particular. I really do think it kind of exudes his personality, especially with this one we get right out of the box. Now, as far as some size comparisons go, uh, here is our Saiyan raised on Earth Goku for a normal size figure arts. And you can see that Zarbon is, he's about a head taller when you sort of factor in or out, I suppose, the hair situation that Goku has. And then of course, We've got his counterpart, Dodoria, here on the right, and you can get an idea of how these two are going to look like next to each other because they're relatively similar in height, but they couldn't be further apart in just about every other detail, really. I mean, look, they're they're entirely different kinds of figures. Dodoria is very much an oddball when it comes to this line in general. 
And then let's move these guys aside and we'll do some other stuff real quick. So here is something smaller. Here's a NECA turtle. So there's Donatello. And then let's move Goku aside. And here is a Super 7 Ultimate. So there's Tigra for something in a you know larger and definitely different scale. And then one more, let's move Donnie aside. And here is a Black Series figure. So here is the Marshall himself, Cobb Vanth. You can get an idea of how he looks like, you know, alongside some other lines and stuff that isn't necessarily the same scale. Figure Arts tends to, of course, run a little small compared to quote unquote normal 112 stuff, but he's gonna fit in pretty decently among some other lines, especially in the 112 range. Now, as far as accessories goes, Zarbon has a pretty solid spread. I will say right off the bat, no effect part, so that's always a negative for me. It just feels like a miss when it comes to this line among any other line, effects should be standard. But I digress. We do get uh, some extra hands to start with because the face plates on this guy are where it's really all at. Uh, so we get extra hands to begin with. Fists on him in the box. We get a set, no, of course a set is two, of the sort of flat, you know, thumb in front of the palm kind of hand. We get a set of relaxed gripping hands. This is for his Namekian Dragon Ball. And then we get a single right, you know, splayed finger hand fully extended uh, hand. So you get five extra hands in the box. We get ways to change up his appearance. So you can see here, this is the standard face that he came with in the box. He has a scouter now, and this is achieved by removable left ears on every faceplate. So you can swap it out and you pop that scouter in, and then he's got new hair to accommodate it. So it's the same idea in general, but the bangs on the left are slightly moved aside just to accommodate that scouter. And then we've also got a different braid here. So this is the first one, and it just goes down his back. This new one swoops around and over his chest, which I really like. I think it's a little bit more dynamic, just a little bit more eye-catching as well. Definitely my preferred configuration. Then we get a few extra faces, and again, these all have removable left ears. So you get a sort of stoic standard head sculpt. We get a sort of screaming, angry, you know, flustered almost, definitely mad kind of head sculpt. And then we get a full on screaming and very much worked up expression, mouth fully open, tongue, teeth, the whole nine yards, everything in there. Uh, so he has four total portraits that you can use. And then of course you've got that smattering of hands and you can change up as far as how the hair goes and the scouter. And then lastly, he does come with a Namekian Dragon Ball. So he comes with the big old two star Dragon Ball. So while he doesn't have an effect part, which is always a bummer for me, I do think he has a lot of good stuff here and plenty of options when it comes to changing up his expression and overall appearance. So yeah, overall, outside of a couple small things, very, very happy with Zarbon. My, my major gripe really is that the cape is a little bit restrictive and it's it's always going to be when it comes down to capes like this. You know, the same happens with Majin Buu or with uh, Saiya Man. They're okay and they work well enough in the way that they're intended to work, but I always wish they could do a little bit more. And Zarbon's in particular, it doesn't really do that much. It just hinges outward. I wish it could go to the side a little bit more or just do anything to make it looks like it's a little bit, you know, blowing to the side. Beyond that though, I think he looks great. He moves well otherwise. I love the fact that they just went ahead and did a full on thigh swivel. And then ultimately the one other thing is that I wish just like every other figure, he had an effect part. A Dragon Ball doesn't count for me. I want him to have an actual energy effect. It's such an integral part to the way these characters interact with each other. It feels like a miss whenever one's not present. So that's going to do it for this look at the Dragon Ball Z SH Figuarts Zarbon. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.